Hey guys, how's it going? It's John from the Machine Shop. This is a bit of a requested video from some of the comments that I had in my previous video. Um, so this is how we're going to install PyCharm for the Raspberry Pi Pico, but on a Mac. You ready? Let's go. Okay, so obviously we're going to need our Raspberry Pi Pico. Here's mine, connected to a little project that I'm currently working on with some sensors and a little display. We're going to need a micro USB cable. Now, if you've got something like a MacBook Pro, you're going to need one of the little USB-C to USB adapters. I'll stick a link in the video description of the one that I use. Um, it's rock solid. It works for everything. It's got a little SD card reader on it as well, in case you need it for other, like Raspberry Pi projects. So I'm going to plug my cable in. Uh, I'm not going to plug it into my Pico just yet, so I'm just going to leave that unplugged. Right, software. Okay, so let's head over to our desktop and let's get some software. So, favorite internet browser? I'm going with Safari and let's just Google PyCharm. Okay, so let's grab that. Uh, right, yes, we want to download PyCharm. Yeah, now obviously here where it's choose what operating system you're looking for, we're looking for Mac. So make sure you've got it clicked on Mac. And then uh, here we want the community edition, the free one. If you want to pay for it, go for the professional one. But specifically, you see here it's got a uh, .dmg Intel. If you've got the new Apple Silicon style MacBook Pros or MacBooks, uh, then make sure you click on Apple Silicon because it's slightly different. I've got an Intel based one, so I'm going to go for that. Uh, there we go and that's done the download so here we go that's now downloading i'm just going to wait for that to download and done cool all right so then click on that dot dmg file let's give it a safari doing that now okay now that's opening up pycharm so really easy to install this on a mac you grab this icon and you drag it into there watch carefully grab it chuck it into there let go done Okay, there we go, it's installed. And that is a satisfying noise to say that it has been installed. So now we can go over to our launch pad, we should find if we scroll through here, we've got pycharm.ce down the bottom. So let's click on that. It'll bounce around for a few seconds. Uh, I've just got a notification here that says PyCharm has been downloaded from the internet. Are you sure you want to open it? Yes, I do. Uh, right. Keeps going to my other screen, but there we go. So here we go, we're into PyCharm. So first thing first is we need to get the MicroPython plugin. So go to plugins, and then when you're in the marketplace, you can search for MicroPython, and there it is, and we just click install. Grand, now it might ask you to restart PyCharm, um, so just go ahead and do that to get the uh, plugin installed. Now I have had this installed already, so I do have a couple of projects that I've already got on here um, anyway. It will probably come up with new projects. So let's just do that. Let's go into new project. So exactly the same as it is in Windows. You put in what the name of your project is going to be, um, and then everything else stays the same. I'm actually going to open up a project that I already had. So I'm going to open up this one. Okay, there we go. So that's a project that I had already uh, set up in PyCharm. So things are... It's basically the same from Windows point of view, apart from the net, the, the, the port for connecting to the actual Pico. So I'll just run through that again anyway. So top left where you've got PyCharm, click on that and go to Preferences. Okay, so in this window now, what we want to do is we need to go to the Languages and Frameworks, go to MicroPython, and make sure that that Enable MicroPython support is ticked. Okay, it's normally unticked. Make sure you tick that. Device type needs to be PyBoard for the Raspberry Pi Pico. Hopefully they're going to update that soon to add that in, but enough for now, it is still PyBoard. Now, the device path, okay? We need to find out what that is. So the easiest way that I've found for doing that is if you press on your Mac, if you press the command and space on my keyboard that I've got here, it's actually the Windows key and space. If I do that, I get my spotlight search come up, right? Now I'm going to type in terminal terminal okay so we're going to do some command line stuff funky right so we need to change directory cd space and then we do forward slash dev dev and another forward slash now you can see that it's changed our location to dev so now we're in that folder now if i put in the command list or ls then it's going to show me everything that's in that folder and the way unix systems works is it's all folder driven so all of these things that are on here are actually devices that are in my computer. 
So what we can see, if we scroll around here, uh, now there is actually a USB serial that I've already got on here. That's interesting. Uh, that's going to be one that I've got. I've got a um, FTDI chip plugged in by USB, but that's not that one because I know that my Pico isn't currently plugged in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug my Pico in. So just remember that list, plug your Pico in. Actually affected my camera there shortly. Uh, there we go. So uh, my Pico is running its code that was already on there, but I'm going to show you how we're going to load it anyway. So now if I come back down, I'm going to put LS again. So it's going to give me the updated one. I'm going to scroll back up. Uh, so now, there we go. There was that one that I had before. That's the FTDI chip that I've already got plugged in. But now I've got this one here, okay? Okay, so I need to copy this now. So I can either do that, right-click, and go copy. Okay, now back in a PyCharm, what we need to do is put that whole path in. So remember, we changed directory first. So forward slash dev, forward slash, and then I can paste in. Uh, so that's P. So I can paste in the value of my port. So that is like on Windows, it's like COM17, whatever it was. Uh, this one is forward slash dev, forward slash, and then that whole thing, including the TTY and all that jazz, that's all in there. Okay, so we click OK. Great. So uh, also it might be as well, if you right click on um, your project, now it might be mine has already got it, that run flash and then the name of my project. Um, or it might be if you right click on the main file, it'll say run flash main. If it hasn't got that, click on mod modify run configuration and then it should put in this flash main.py and click OK. Then when you go back into there, you should see that that says run uh, flash main.py. So um, I've got a little project here. This is basically um, on my board that I've got here. I've got a temperature and humidity sensor and I've got a little OLED display. You can probably just about see. Uh, let me go on to this one. There you go. You can just about see there that it's showing the temperature and the humidity that where I'm sat in my lab now, it's actually quite cold. It's 16.51 degrees centigrade. That's why I've got a jumper on. Anyway, so back into here, um, what we need to do is I need to flash this over to my device. Now, what I want to do is I actually want to, uh, I want to change where on my screen uh, this information is. I don't like it being in the middle. I want it to be butt up against the uh, side. So uh, I'm going to change my X coordinates here to zero and zero. There we go. So I'm changing those values and I'm actually going to download the whole thing, the whole project. So if you've got a project where it's got multiple files, you right click on the folder right at the top and you go run flash SHT31. So that's the name of my project. And here, look down the bottom, it's showing that it's transferring both of those files over. Right, now it says, can you see down the bottom, it says soft reboot. It doesn't actually do anything at that point from what I've found so far. Um, there are two ways in which you can get your thing to uh, start running your code. You can either disconnect it and plug it back in, or you can do like I've done before, where you go into tools, go to MicroPython and go MicroPython repo. Okay, and then uh, it's done an interrupt. So we can see the screen's now gone off because it's interrupted. And then if I press Control D, we can see that my text has moved and it's actually showing my updated uh, location on my screen. So there we go. We've downloaded it to my um, to the Raspberry Pi Pico. What I should be able to do is unplug it and plug it back in. And yeah, sure enough, there we go. It's now running from boot. So there we go. My microcontroller, I could just plug that in by USB power. I could plug that into a power bank. I could plug it into a um you know a socket which is usb whatever i wanted and it would start running that code so there we go cool awesome so a really quick video on how to install pycharm on the mac how to get your port for your pi pico and how to download your program onto your board cool thank you guys for watching me thanks for the comments in the last video i requested in this specific video um if you liked it hit that like button subscribe share it on social media if you want to whilst you're there you can find us at machine shop uk uh, you can also visit our website, The Machine Shop UK, where we've got our online store, uh, where I'm actually going to be getting some Raspberry Pi Picos in stock. So have a look out for those. And we've got links to all the other videos that we've done as well. Cool. Thanks for joining me, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.